Hey guys, Barry here, Barry Fast Cars, and um, I want to do a shout out. Um, I am on Instagram as Barry Fast Cars, so f follow me there. Um, it's anytime I'm at a, a car event, I'm taking pictures. I think some of my highlights last year were um, Pebble Beach, chatting with uh, Christian von Koenigsegg. He's just sitting in his regera, and I was like, hey, Christian von Koenigsegg, I want to see you guys make a naturally aspirated motor. Because, of course, free valve, you know, the camless motor designs. This opens up Pandora's box for, you know, so many options. So the, that's a separate video, but we'll get into that at some point for sure. But yeah, highlights like that. I have some beautiful Regera pictures, and I got to... Uh, I saw Jim Glickenhaus and then the SCG-001, the one he's going to drive to Le Mans and race there. Um, just a bunch of Paganis. There were like seven or eight Paganis. This is all at Quail, uh, by the way. And um, I got to see the Bugatti Chiron. And uh, they opened the door for me. Got to check it all out. Uh, I'm going to step this game up big time, guys. I go to some serious events and make those events my, you know what, um, we own these. I got to drive a McLaren. I got to drive a McLaren 570 GT. <laughs> uh, that, of course, redefined what I consider fast. And I've driven some fast cars. I got to borrow, I guess that was two years ago. I got to drive for a whole day. My good friend's um, I think it's a 2000 Ferrari 360 Modena, um, six-speed, sequen uh, not sequential, six-speed gated um, transmission. That was that was actually I got to drive it to my uh, ten-year high school reunion. So and he also had he used to have a GT3 RS. I got to rip on that, but the 570 GT. It also gave me new insight into the. Um, epicness of dual clutch gearboxes. It was the first dual clutch I, I believe that I've driven uh, that I can recall. I've ridden in dual clutch gearboxes, but like Audi TDI dual clutches, so it doesn't really count. But being able to rip 560 whatever, 570, 560 horsepower, and then just grab the gear, and then it just punches into the next gear, and it's still essentially on boost, and it squirms up. Um, also drove an Alfa Romeo 4C. That was cool. I would have liked to drive the uh, <laughs> the Julia, but it was pre-production at the time. Those are just finally, I think, getting delivered six months later, and I saw them two years ago at the LA Auto Show. I also went to the LA Auto Show this last year. I'll, I'll step up my game, guys. And uh, Long Beach Grand Prix is coming up in a couple months here. That should be brilliant. Daytona was... Pff, Daytona was amazing. I will do very... I've done a lot of Formula 1 videos, but I'm going to get very specific on um, on the IMSA, the WeatherTech class, the WeatherTech uh, championship. It is, it is world class, and I may argue now, in 2017, better than WEC. Especially now that Audi's gone from WEC. Don't get me wrong, I love the P1 hybrid prototypes, but um, they're getting a little out of hand, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I want to talk about Liberty Media taking over Formula One. I don't have all the specifics in front of me, so bear with me, but um, Chase Carey is the CEO of... <laughs> He's a head honcho at Liberty Media, and he essentially is replacing Bernie Ecclestone. Now, I trust Liberty Media. I think they have really good head on their shoulders. They already proved that by bringing on Ross Braun. So I need to chit-chat with Ross Braun. If you saw my last video about um, the future of the Formula One engines, Ross Braun and I need to get, get a, little, a little conversation going. Who knows? Maybe we'll meet up at Pebble Beach this year. I saw Jean Tot there a couple years ago, so why not Ross? And uh, so they're headquartered in the U.S., but now I think that is going to, they're going to have a branch in the U.K., so I'll give them a little, little closer to the, uh, a little closer to the action. 
they have some great ideas. Honestly, the best idea they have at this point in time, which they've stated unequivocally, no matter what, we will go in this direction, which is a far more equitable distribution of revenue amongst the teams. Formula One does not make revenue without the teams. They deserve, no matter who they are, Manor, Ferrari, Williams, Force, they all deserve that it should be 100% even distribution. No ifs, no ands, no buts. I don't personally, and there, we could have a debate about this by all means, I'm open to other opinions, but I don't even think that teams should make money off of winning the championship. I think that winning the Formula One World Championship and everything that comes from it, because of course they're going to get more sponsorship, aka money, they're going to get more notoriety, fame, all the above, and the uh, prestige of winning the fucking Formula One World Championship. That should be enough. They shouldn't be doing it for the money. They should be in the sport and be able to be completely, you know, self-sufficient, generally speaking. But um, it's going, there's going to be some litigation, it looks like, or um, some court processes in regards to is Formula One anti-sporting? It's essentially, is Formula One fair? And, uh, you know, I, I think there's arguments certainly on both sides, but I think it might be a little bit stronger towards the no, it is not. It is not fair. Um, so... That, that's probably the biggest thing. Ferrari, Ferrari, for being Ferrari, which obviously I'm a huge Ferrari fan. I love Ferrari. They need to get their act together, and I'll like them even more. Um, how they ever got rid of Michael in 06. Whatever. Um, they ended up winning a championship the next season. They do not deserve an automatic $100 million. They don't need... 100 million dollars. What they need is actually probably less money so they become more efficient. Um, just to go on a little diatribe, they I think they rely on that and I think it kind of makes them a little lazy in it. in some respects. I think that uh, automatic payment what what are they what was the last I mean someone put in the comments. What was the last time Ferrari got a new sponsor, uh, anything near notoriety of sponsorship. Why? Because they're getting automatic money, and that's unacceptable in my book. I, I would love to see less sponsorship on some cars, you know, title sponsor here, this sponsor there, blah, blah, blah. But I think the cars should be more correlated, more focused on, you know, representing the brand that they are, which would be, which would be really nice. Uh, which is why we need more brands in the sport. God bless. Remember we had Toyota, BMW, Honda Works team, this, that, and the other. The, early, the 2000s, the, that decade, that was a heyday. No doubt. Epically gorgeous cars. Manufacturer sponsorship. Hockenheim selling out with Nürburgring in the same season, both selling out. You got some work to do, Liberty, for sure. And um, I think you put a, a great team together, it looks like. I don't know the other guy from ESPN. What's his name? I should have researched this. Um, well, the third guy. There's like a, a trifecta of, of kind of new management to take on Formula One for the future. And um, bring it another direction. Chase Carey has mentioned, I think, like I quote, more or less, uh, he wants 21 Super Bowls. I honestly don't think there needs to be more than 20 races. Um, I Obviously, I love Formula 1. I, I wish Formula 1 was on every day. But I also think that I don't really like back-to-back -back race weekends. I think a weekend off everything, every, you know, I think it should be every other weekend. Whether that means starting the season earlier, um, what have you. We'll see. Um, and it, it just a honing down of where we are racing. It should be places where they are make the sport is making good money. Well, of course they're making good money because the 
most of these, st not stupid, there's really no stupid tracks, maybe Azerbaijan, Baku, but they got some work to do this year. But as an aside, kind of correlated to that, the Russian, the second Russian Grand Prix was lo definitely better than the first one. Um, the first one was just snooze fest, second year, better. Um, but we'll see what Azerbaijan, but th who's going to that? Like, who's traveling to Azerbaijan to, for Formula One? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think paring it down would be a better concept at first, and, you know, getting really solid races and, and um, spectatorship, you know, a spectacle. You know, kind of like, instead of maybe correlating it to the Super Bowl, maybe like 18 to 20 Indy 500s from, you know, the 90s or late 80s when there was half a million people just in the grandstands I didn't even talk about that Alexander Rossi winning the winning the Indy 500 I got to meet him at Austin too I was just walking and I was like hey there's some manor guys and I was like hey guys how's it going and then boom it was Alexander Rossi I started chatting with him you gotta go to these races that's one thing. If you're a Formula One fan, you have to go to either your nearest race or your furthest race. Make it happen because it is so worth it. It is, and you know, the drivers love us being there. Uh, I'll do a whole separate video about drivers in um, 2017 lineups. <laughs> we had some mix-ups, but um, I, Liberty, they're on the right path, and I like that they did a nice you know, assessment for essentially the second half of 2016, uh, did a little buyout, I think like th th threw a billion at it, and like, yeah, we're interested, here's a billion dollars. And now they've kind of finished it up, the extra seven and a half, eight billion to buy it out. But for international people, like, that's, that's the worth of, that's a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but that's how much, like, one, or two American football teams are worth these franchises. Uh, it's it's an interesting comparison for sure. I mean, one game, one good football game in the regular season will bring more people to it than uh, some of these international, like far-reaching Formula One races. It's kind of unacceptable for a worldwide sport, but here we are. So there's mad, mad possibilities for sure. Um, simplification is a necessity. Even distribution of money. I think every team that there's generally speaking a hundred billion dollars, hundred billion, one billion, sorry, of revenue. I think each team should be given. You are in the sport. Here is $100 million. At the end of the year, here's payday. Thank you. Come again. I think that's just how it should be. Um, and then what it comes down to is the governing body managing who is allowed into the sport. You gotta, you know, you can't just show up and be like, hey, we brought our GP2 car and put a you know, bigger tires on it, and we want money. No, you, you have to compete. And I think Formula One would kind of automatically force that in the sense that it is Formula One. People come there, they want to compete. One driver's gonna wanna drive for a team that's half-assing it. So, I think a little free market in there would, would open things up a bit. We'll see, and, um, but I, I, want, I want a nice, I want parody. I want to see Fernando Alonso battling Lewis Hamilton again. A little Vettel in there. A little Valtteri Bottas. <laughs> Not to mention the Red Bull duo. Strongest lineup in 2017. For sure. Okay. Well, Liberty. I will do more videos on Liberty when I get more facts in front of me. Um, but I think it's a good thing. I couldn't thank Bernie enough. He's done an amazing job. People give him shit, but most of the pe things people, people are giving him shit for weren't even his fault. A lot of it is the FIA, and the FIA is 
pretty terrible, just monumentally bureaucratic and just honestly kind of a waste of a lot of time and money for sure. So um, we shall see. We shall see. So all I wish the best of luck to Liberty. Um, maybe I'd love to work for them someday. That would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, real quick before I sign off, the second biggest thing that they're ta talking about tackling is digital media. And that could be huge. I mean, I would be more than willing to pay, let's say, $100 to have access to the full season of Formula One. I don't pay for TV. I'm one of the biggest Formula One fans and I don't pay for it. I obtain it through other means, let's say. And um, it's not, sometimes it's really frustrating because I'm able to watch it live. Um, I won't tell you how yet, <laughs> but I'm able to watch it live, but it's, you know, it's obviously through the internet and it's sometimes very frustrating. Uh, I don't have the best internet. I have good internet, but I don't have the best. And sometimes my computer is wonky. This, that, and the other. And uh, so I would, I would gladly pay for a high-quality streaming service where I, where not only could I watch every single race live, but it was very high-quality coverage. And they were, I could watch any race throughout the entire season. So I could go back and rewatch races, rewatch a practice session, um, rewatch an interview with a with a driver. We'll see. Um, hundred dollars a year? I ah, fuck. Ah, maybe even two hundred dollars a year. Like, what would that be? Well, a hundred dollars a year would be eight dollars, eight fifty a month. So what would I be willing to pay? There's two races a month. I'd be willing to pay, you know, ten. $20 a month for the races. Not in August. There's no racing in August, so screw you. And of course, of course, there's no racing in March and or January, February, and December. But yes. Another thing. <laughs> they talked about eliminating Friday practice because I just mentioned practice. Why not? If there was some really good support series, which I think there should be a GT championship that follows Formula One around, not just the Porsche one. I think there should be a GT championship. But that's where like retired F1 drivers could like hop in a, a Mercedes AMG GT3 versus a Ferrari 488, you know, type thing, you know, balance of performance, kind of like the Mons cars, the GT3 cars, and uh, rip around the same track at a different time. If there was more spectacles on Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, and Friday was like, you know, meet the driver day, this, that, and the other, like, all that fun stuff. That would replace the them tootling around, you know, half a track away from each other on Friday. I don't mind Friday practice. I watch every single one, essentially. Um, but it would be a good way to eliminate some spending, because I just have a Saturday practice, you're setting up for qualifying a couple hours later, qualifying, perhaps a practice before the race on Sunday, especially, you know, Park Ferme could work around this, but, you know, especially there's different conditions. There's no excuse, in my opinion, it's a safety grounds to have a slightly different setup if conditions are drastically different on Sunday. So a one hour practice session on Sunday. I don't know. At the very least, it would make the cars have to be simpler. It have to be. Okay, that's what I'm going to say for now. Um, that, uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to upload these now. Till next time. Peace.